Welcome to Layback with Betfair. Joined by the A-Team, we're back. Hello, welcome to Layback with Betfair. I'm Tom Haylock. Move over that Nick Foot, Carl, Carl Dowie, get lost. I am back in the main chair as I welcome you. Two uh, unique guests today. Start with you, Liam Clancy, the King. How are you, mate? Well, it's nice to be back, Tommy, and I love that they've vacated the seats for us on potentially the greatest day of, of Brisbane racing for the year. A couple We've got of them Australia and JJ. Oh, yes, a couple of them been dropped due to performance. So I'm in the host chair. Um, Rory Flanagan, we've got you. Talk about Eagle Farm. We've got the Stradbroke, as you mentioned, um, Liam. Massive, massive race today. Two Group 1s, three Group 2s, full black type card at Eagle Farm. And we've got a Royal Ascot special as well. Yeah, looking forward to getting stuck into that. Uh, and a couple of juicy imports going around at uh, Eagle Farm as well. Looking forward to the show. Um, as usual, we start with a couple of lay-bins to kick things off. But um, what have you got for us? You come prepared? How long have you been off uh, layback for? A few weeks? Oh, yeah. I, I don't yeah. think I've been on layback since championships. So oh, what's that? You know, Six or seven weeks? Several, several weeks of material. And many things have, have pissed me spell. off in that I time. I can imagine. So, I can imagine. What but it, it is funny when you get put on the spot, you're like, oh, I know I've been angry many times in the last six weeks. But um, I take notes now. Yeah? But it's everything it's, that annoys me. It's there's a full notes in my iPhone. So it's what's fresh on the mind. And I've just come back from Adelaide. Had a week over there. I love Adelaide. You're, oh, you're an Adelaide, Adelaide boy. Adelaide. <laughs> no, certainly not. Uh, I love almost everything about it. <laughs> but the one thing that I will lay is you go to the supermarket to get your you know your, your meats and your things for the the coming week. Mm-hmm. They close at what five thirty six p.m. on a Sunday. Yeah. And so you just, I think we've become so used to over here just going to the supermarket anytime, day 24/7. or night. 24-7. Yeah, exactly Most right. Them, yeah. And you just can't do it in Adelaide. You need to be so prepared. So from a preparation point of view, I'm laying the, the trading times of the Adelaide supermarkets. Don't mind it. I don't, can, don't I can second me. that having just driven back from Adelaide. What were you doing over there? Uh, I was just on a little uh, culinary adventure. Just oh, nice. some nice restaurants. and Barossa, McLaren Vale. And, uh, McLaren Vale's next time. Yeah. We'll go back next time. Um, don't know if I'll sneak over for the gather round next year, but um, that brings me to my lay bin. Is oh, you've got the, one for us. You've got to fill yes, out the run sheet next time. <laughs> the, uh, the driving. So if you are driving on a freeway or a highway, what is the point of the on-ramp if you don't get to merging speed? You're doing 50, you're coming onto a freeway doing 100. You are the reason that traffic exists. Yep. doesn't matter how many lanes they can build on the Monash. If everyone keeps merging at 60 Ks in 100, you are going to contribute to traffic. No one can merge. It's it's actually a great great lay bin because no one can merge. It's the reason why you see the red section on the maps. They're always merging lanes because people struggle. And you go to countries in Asia or Europe and it's just everyone in small cars who just lets everyone in and they all merge because they yep. understand everyone has somewhere to be. I'll tell you what, uh, I'm not laying culinary adventure. I don't think that's been said <laughs> on this show for quite a while, so welcome, Rory. <coughs> don't think Reese would know the meaning of <laughs> culinary adventure. Um, I've got one, ironing. Uh, that's the note here. Ironing in general can get to lay in. But uh, I recently discovered that a friend of mine irons his shoelaces. <laughs> what kind of rubbish, floggish behaviour is that? Um, melt? A little tip I, on I just I gave up when he said that. So when did Footy tell you he was doing that? <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of like the wood iron. <laughs> I, I, who the hell irons their shoelaces? Get the absolute lay in. Unbelievable scenes. Anyway, let's get to the more serious stuff. What a great day of racing it is, the Stradbroke. It is probably the best race. And I'll ask you guys, is it the best race in Queensland? Uh, I think it's one of the most entertaining races just from the natural uh, discourse of being a, a very large field with a handicap attached yes, to it. Like so, the Doncaster. Yeah, which correct. Is often voted in New South Wales as the best. Um, I, I always prefer the sprint races. So, yeah. um, 10,000 know. or... Doom of 10,000 the one, and obviously we saw the Kingsley Smith Cup um, just uh, what, two weeks ago. So, and they're probably my favourites, but I do love the Stratty and, and the um, the chance it has to throw off a, a big price winner, which we always love. Looks an impossible race this year. I look forward to dissecting it. What do you make of the track this year? So, with you, mate? Well, they seem to be running on fairly well in, mm. in recent weeks. Well, we've, I think, we're four and a half metres. Um, the rail, and uh, and we look like getting, we've had some great weather, and we, we look to continue getting great weather which should hypothetically give everyone their chance. So I, I'm, I'm pretty wrapped with the way it's playing and um, and there's no real issue finding any sort of particular runner. If you if they go to the front, they're going to have the chance with their back markers and there's a bit of tempo, you're sweet as. So 
Um, no, I'm wrapped and looking forward to a great meeting. Has been pissed off of lights at all tracks in Queensland, Rory. Um, yeah. Anything to add? Could, could be a bit of wear and tear. I, I'd be a bit sceptical of those horses drawn low. Yep. Um, especially the ones who are going to be sort of midfield or, or back because they're going to be buried in a pack and try and angle out. You might not, not, might not necessarily get across. If you're drawn wide and you or get back horse, it's not going to be a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tend to agree with White Barrows. It's not going to be the end of the, end of the world if you are drawn really wide. We start with race three, the listed Oxlade Stakes, over 1,300 metres. Um, Megastar Heart, Tahini, Peace Centre, look for speed influences, Len? Yeah, uh, pretty uh, – there's, there's not a whole lot of uh, form behind this field yet. Um, and so I'm leaning towards those who um, I've seen quite a few times and have been able to put up some pretty consistent ratings. So – uh, while I'm not having an official bet on the race, I've loved the way Embassy's gone about it, this preparation. Um, really had no chance three wide the whole trip. Last start went behind that in that Arabian summer race where, um, you know, he found some form from, mm. from a while back. And uh, if you look at Embassy's first up run, it was a terrific, what was that? That's a two and a half length career peak, that one. And um, and was that Mashani Lily form as well that I'm really keen to follow. So. Embassy slightly on top, but market hasn't missed. So happy to uh, shoulder arms this one. Any issue thirteen hundred for him? Uh, well, I mean, you don't know, right? Like mm. it's only got to about eleven hundred beforehand. Um, but the way that it stuck on three wide when it really had no right to last start, and then um, and the previous start when went through the line really nicely, you can only assume. And uh, and the Snowdens are the right team to assume for. I think I think the ground's also a big factor. If you go through his trials, he had one trial by four lengths on the dry deck just scooted clear, look like that's his ideal surface. And he hasn't faced it on race day yet. He's only had soft tracks. So that could bring out more improvement. So if you like him, I couldn't talk you out of it. Yeah, he was, as you mentioned, Liam, he was very wide throughout um, last start. It's it's an interesting one with these horses up to 1,300 metres, lightly raced. It is a new challenge for them. Embassy, I think, will, will run it. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple that probably run it out stronger, but I went looking for those horses that would run it out a bit stronger and improve it. Um, there's a couple like um, Megastar Hard, who's... Seen over 1250 last start and, and Savage the Lion. Um, I just found that the main dangers to Hina, Megastar Hart, were fence and run at Canterbury. Mm. Um, so that's a huge uh, positive for that form line in terms of um, where you are and, and horses off that run, obviously, um, tend to struggle. Obviously, it's a, a quick lane, the fence at the moment at Canterbury. So um, I found it very, very tough. Tahina obviously beat Medina, who won as well on the weekend. So the form kind of stacks up. I found it very tricky. Do you have a, a bet, Rory? Yeah, no, just just leaning towards Embassy, but couldn't have any real strong conviction. Um, if there's some sort of massive drift on the day, then you know, stay away. But if the money comes from, I might follow it. Yep. So here we go. One race you do have an opinion of is the Brisbane Cup. I look forward to dissecting. That we mentioned um, talking ahead of the show, Salerno won this race last year from Warning, who was right up there. Um, Knight's Order goes around again, won it a couple of years ago as well. So um, interesting race. You'd think speed from out wide with Goldman, Knight's Order hold the key there. We'll start with you, Rory, here. Yeah, it'll be gay bot dictated. Depends how hard um, they want to go in front. Could have a whole show dedicated to talking about Ahmad for me. I'd rather uh, not. That'd be pretty uh, boring. Oh, he's got he's got ten years of stories banked up, but um, <clears throat> you know he's going to miss the start by anywhere between six and twenty lengths. So if you like him at the price he is now, don't back him. Yep. Take him in play, which you can do on Betfair. You can't do that anywhere else. Take him when he gets out to double, triple, quadruple. You know you can get sixteen dollars. The Adelaide Cup he ended up hundred dollars in the run and still stuck on for four. <laughs> there was other reasons for that. Yeah, for that too. <laughs> but you're going to get a better price for him, same as last start as well, sound down. He ballooned in price after playing on the start. If um, he misses at two lengths, does he drift significantly or four even four he'll, lengths? He'll still because... he'll still drift. He'll still drift. you you no matter what happens, even if he jumps with him, he's still going he's a get back horse. He's going he's going to drift somewhat. It's just to the extent of how much you want to take. I wouldn't be taking that that price he is at the moment. I think it's too short for him. Um, but I still think he's definitely an in play bet. Um, as for the two, so you're, you're backing him in play, yeah, yep. 100%. Yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably set it at double figures, probably go ten dollars because that's what I expect you, you'll definitely get. Um, yep. maybe something shorter, maybe something longer as well. Don't get matched, so be it. That means he's, he's going close. Um, Salino is uh simply just a dry track horse, yep, two miles stay out on a dry track. He didn't fire a shot in Europe on, on wet decks, he hasn't fired a shot on wet deck here ever. 
Um, he was, I think, in front of mostly Cloudy in the Sydney Cup. Um, yeah, yeah. And there's the same same weight discrepancy between them in this race, and yet one is four times the price. So I'm leaning to Selena over mostly Cloudy for that reason, and then also that ties into warning. These two fought out the finish last year. Warning's a three-time winner, third up. Comes into this race, third up. Um, and he's arguably going better than his first two runs last year. We were in 10th and 10th. This prep is run uh, eighth and ninth, I think. And uh, you're getting 30 odd dollars for him. So those are my three bets. You make a good case with warning. Um, it's, these are so hard to catch these horses, Liam. Like you just go through the form. Like I can't remember the last time warning actually won a race. It's been a, a long time. It was over 630 days ago. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, but like, I, I completely understand the point. And, and I'm with Selena as well on a very yeah. small basis to exactly your point, dry deck, but also just this horse hates running anything that's not two mile. Yep. And then finally starts to produce some really nice figures at the two mile. So I'm with there, but um, I can understand. Like, I think mostly Cloudy is the deserved favourite, but there's no way I could be taking 250, 260 about the horse. I think Allegron looks to have settled into the Bjorn Baker yard really well. Um, that that recent second um, it was beaten by, he's a shocker who's obviously flying. Mm. Um, so the form's really good there. I made is one that obviously love the horse and love what it tries to do. Just does so much wrong. So you could, I don't mind Rory's strategy there. Um, but pen through those top three and you end up with horses that don't win a lot. So, um, so Salino is the one that I've, I've landed on with the, with the two mile form. Uh, but it, when you've got such a good card ahead from, from races five onwards, it'll just be really small bets to start the card. Salino's, Salino's run eight times beyond 2,800 meters on a dry deck. And he finished the first two on six occasions. Yeah, there you go. He, he was. Oh, I thought mostly Cloudy's run the Sydney Cup was better than him because uh, Rachel King took off and had to do the the card around and, and went wide, whereas the ride on Selena was better, saved ground, and was just a bit more patient and just had the the extra legs late and they crossed the line with the half a length between the two. Obviously, we've seen mostly Cloudy come out down in Victoria and um, in the Rams and that was a superb run, really charged late. Um, I've got him on top. Um, but I agree, I could not take anything in in these staying races at that price. It's so hard to predict, and they just change and luck in running and whoever turns up in the day. So let's move on. Um, race five, the Guns In Classic, Group 3, Mile Race. Uh, Mar and Eustace, uh, no, they didn't. They didn't win this race last year. Um, it was the Joe Jenkins. Um, what do you make in the Guns In Classic, Mile Race, uh, you think? The, the emergency down the bottom gets a run now and probably is a speed influence in the race along with Invincible Spy. Liam? Yeah, and base is loaded is another one that really likes to sit up on speed. Um, I, I'm actually really keen this race. There's <clears throat> uh, there's a horse coming over from New Zealand for the Forceman Yard uh, called Mary Shan, uh, number 15, the three-year-old filly. Um, this filly got within a length of Quintessa and Molly Bloom in two different races over the mile in New Zealand on dry tracks. And then uh, most recent start was on a really soaking wet heavy 10 and absolutely brained them over the 1400. So up to the mile, dry track, proven form over in New Zealand. Obviously, we know Quintessa and Molly Bloom quite well now. And uh, and then he's coming off such a strong win that is, appears to be in very good form. And um, Tyler, will, Tyler Sheila will need to produce a pretty good ride from out wide. But in a, in a really even race, uh, I think Mary Shan is a terrific betting proposition. And, uh, and base is loaded, one that we touched on very briefly. Um, for Timmy Clark, is one that's well over the odds as well. It's a horror draw, um, but we know he eats up the mile, ran a really nice second mm -hmm. to militarise in that two-year-old year and has been unlucky this prep so far, being caught wide. So big price there. Um, so Mary Shannon, base is loaded, the two that I'm, I'm keen to play. Yeah, you make a good point. Um, the creek form as well, as we saw um, last week, I mean, impressively. So you make a good case there for the New Zealander. Rory, any opinion? Well, I, I actually like the other New Zealander geriatrics. Yep, won well, done nothing wrong. Won well. I'm just a little bit wary of uh, the mile. Stepped up to the mile once in New Zealand and is beaten um, by a lap. And uh, 1,400 probably looks his go. So a little bit wary there. The other one I did like was uh, Amur for Godolphin. Um, I don't think he liked being uh, drawn the rail. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, boys. You're all right, mate. It's, all right. it's that time of year. Um, <laughs> Don't think he like being drawn the rail, and I think he finds several lengths for a dry deck. So I think he's uh, a decent knockout shout at about 20 bucks. There you go. A couple there for Rory at value. Uh, let's go to the group one. First group one, 
of the meeting. JJ Atkins, 1,600 metres. As I mentioned, Maya and Eustace won this race last year with King Colorado. She's a belter the year prior and Converge um, before that. Interesting race. Obviously, broadsiding, an impressive, superb win um, in the lead-up sires. Can they beat him? A couple of things against him today, but uh, I think you've got him on top. Uh, I don't think they can beat him. Uh, personally, I think this horse is well and truly above the others in this race. Um, you don't have to look very far. The Group 1 champagne win was phenomenal. And then mm. came back last start when a lot of things went, went against. Um, it was a win from right at the back. Had to go around a wall of horses and was off balance for quite a bit of that. And then just put them away. J-Mac jumps on here, draws better from two. Sits closer. I think this is just a star on the rise. This is a put in take out job. Um, <laughs> the exact is one that I'm half keen to play for. Um, <laughs> number two, yeah. Zuna, who ran second to broadsiding already. And, um, and Zara jumps on, and we, this is the $13, well, I think it's fifth pick. So, and I've got a second pick in the market. So I think broadsiding be winning. It'll just be about finding the second horse. But I know you guys are somewhat keen to take the horse. Um, just on that, you can bet on the exotics. <laughs> on the exchange as well at BFS. So you could jump on the Quinella, check the markets there. I'm not going to take on broadsiding. It's just firm tracks, the only concern, but his firm track runs were early and over shorter. So whether it was the firm track that he, I, I think he's a better horse potentially on a heavy, but I don't think the wet will be, uh, the dry will be any issue for him. And I've got him on top. I don't know if I want to dive in at $1.70. Um, I thought his win last start was enormous and I was strongly with him because he was just so much better than him. Um, Nick Foot was against him, so I have to bring that up. But um, <laughs> he, Nick made some points around this was probably the aim, and it was a million dollar race anyway. But it was a bat marker drew wide. He can probably be closer now, up to a mile, draws better. McDonald on, he does tick a lot of boxes, and this is probably their grand final. Uh, if backing or laying broadsiding, Rory, I'd be much more inclined to lay at that price, having seen what a lot of the two darn hot progeny, because it's a UK stallion, a lot of the two darn hot progeny are starting to show bit of preference for some cut in the ground and he's obviously undefeated on wet tracks but he's a maiden on dry tracks you know granted yes that was early doors in his career he was still learning what the cape was about but there's there's an angle there to make a case of saying he's a better wet tracker than he is a dry tracker yeah. and i think if the fence is going to be off like it has been uh, somewhat the last few weeks and he's and he's drawn the fence um and he doesn't get away sweetly um, and he lands back there and he's forced to go up the inside. Is that going to be too much for him to do, considering you know, he basically needed a lot of it to, to swoop down the outside mm. last time? It's fascinating watching the way the track plays is going to have an impact on the market as well. He might end up 220, 230 on, or even 250 if the fence is off limb and he might become even more attractive from a betting perspective. Well, I highly doubt it. Um, <laughs> Barry has seen me last will... start and was, I think, 350, 360 on Thursday, Friday. And, yeah. and on race day, they just absolutely truckloaded this runner and yeah. um, proved everyone right who was taking those prices. So I very much doubt that this horse will get to uh, 64. I hope I hope for our sake he does, yeah. but I don't think he will. I, I agree. Um, I've got him on top broadsiding. He looks the horse to beat in the JJ Atkins. Now it is time for What Caught My Eye. And we saw last week... Group one um, and a massive, massive odds winner in Sox Station, mate. Yeah, the Oaks. Yeah. Mm. Um, it, it really hurts me to talk about this, having been uh, just a slight nibble on our gold hope that oh. loomed up outside and appeared to go straight past Sox Nation. Oh. But uh, Sox Station was just too strong in the end. And uh, what it, it's an easy talking point for us, obviously representing Betfair, but the BSP was $160. Um, I, I think sports bet were. Well, I, I know sports bet were eighty one dollars. So um, even for the ten dollar punters out there, you're returning sixteen hundred instead of eight hundred and ten. And uh, I know Double. which one I'd prefer. That's for sure. But exactly uh, just goes to show, Kieran Mara over the two anything above two thousand meters is just any group so one. good, isn't it? Yeah, just Kieran Mara in any group one. These yeah. horses just grow lengths and lengths, Rory. It'd be seething if you were Chris Waller throwing just a million darts and still not landing <laughs> anywhere near it. Amazing. I want to put the jockeys from that race in the lane in. I'd like to see them participate at least. There are a lot of favourites out the back. We see it all too often. These big races, and they just wait for others to make a move. In Sydney, they race yeah. to the maps. Nothing happens. They just dawdle yeah. around. I'm on the best horse. I'll wait for them to come back to me. 100%. It happens all the time. And 
they hardly participated. They were all in a clump out the back and it was a race dominated by those up on speed. Get the absolute lab in, make an effort, make something happen. <laughs> are they are they scared of repercussions? Are they scared of making mistakes? Are they scared of stewards? Or do they just I think I think they're just scared of cooking their horse by making a sustained run or a mid race move or, or something like that. Racing's like different in Australia, you'll, isn't it? You look at Hong Kong, look what Zach Burton does. He always seems to take off the underside, you know, seven hundred to go and bolts him. Same with Marrera. Like yep. you can actually try. Like no one's gonna hang you for actually trying to I'd win much the race. rather back a horse that's going fast in front than sitting at the back last. Oh, or if they if back. they drop the anchor, rip, whip around them. Yep. Yeah, it's very rare to see that in an Oaks or a Derby where these three year olds are getting out to the trip for the first time because you know they they think oh well we're going to struggle to get what well, on this occasion twenty two hundred but a lot of the time twenty four hundred mm. and then you set them alight with a thousand to go it's like oh, very unlikely to get there then. What so, was the horse that did that in an Oaks? Sweaty, Victoria the Sweaty Pino? Spirit. Pino. Oh, Pino. Oh, Pino. One that whipped yeah. around with about oh yeah yeah Pino. Yep. About sixteen hundred to go and just whipped around took the lead and. But maybe there's a, a punting lesson. Um, I don't know, Shane Chirlio, who's done a bit of work with Beffer in the past, actually tipped that on SEN. Leaders and horses on speed in these Oaks and derbies. Maybe there's something in that. Mm. There we go. Um, good work caught my eye. $160 Betfair starting price winner in the Oaks. Let's get to race seven, the Dane Ripper, 1,300 metres, group two. You're keen to play here, Liam? Yeah, it's a, it's a great quaddie um, up at Eagle Farm <clears> on the weekend. Hopefully we're um, alive. You broadsiding one out. Broadsiding be one out in the first, absolutely, and then uh, and then I'm going fairly uh, fairly short in this leg as well. Um, there's a, a case to be made that if Chinny Boo um, reproduces the same rating as last start, absolutely bolts in. Um, I wouldn't expect that the rating to be as high. Mm. It doesn't need to be. Um, Chinny Boone's one where I think we're five dollars currently on the exchange, um, and then the other one I want to be with. Uh, Chris Waller, first time for Say Majik coming mm. from the Graham B. Big yard. watch. Big Huge jockey watch. booking. Uh, yeah, like J-Mac goes on mm. and also has, has trial. Good. Yeah, the trial normally Say Majik will sit back in the run mm. and sort of just run through the line. With forward, looks like it's a half a set play here. So they're the two. A bit really of a smell about it. Yeah, there is. Yeah. You know, when you just see these first time Chris Waller runners. Like, you know, Something first different. up for Waller, there's probably a bit more to come. I'm not sure there is for this horse, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, Pretty short with Chinny Boom, same with Jake, um, and keen to be against Coeur Volant. Who... I'm surprised by this. Yeah, I thought fair. I thought Coeur Volant was the horse out of the lead up, and um, obviously quite a few come out of that Helen Bolton Colin. Um, why are you taking Coeur Volant? Oh, it's I, good late. I would like Coeur Volant, uh, 1400, 1600. Yeah, but only up to 1300. I still think there's more to come. It was I loved this horse in, in the spring, but. The current ratings that um, she's produced does not equate to a five fifty price at the moment. Should more be closer to um, closer to double figures. So uh, I'm very happy to lay at current price all the way out to double figures. I'll be laying the place as well. And I think yeah, your Chinny Booms, your Sam Jakes, and even that Cho- Coco Jumbo, who um, won on debut at Hawkesbury, um, having come over from Europe, um, happy to be with that form as well. So um, yeah, cool over lot. Still plenty to come. Wouldn't be sacking for the entire prep, but just don't think this is its race. No, sounds like you, you are. Um, <laughs> well, six of those six of these runners come through that Helen Coughlin uh, listed race there, and Chitty Boom just dominated from the front. Didn't give anything else a chance. Uh, Coeur Volante ran the fastest, second fastest final 400 and 200 a day there, the fastest 200 metres of the race. I think you have to, and that's why, if that's the lead up, uh, Coeur Volante's got to be in the mix for me. I don't think uh, I think the race just set up really well for Chinny Boom last start, um, and meets slightly worse at the weights Chinny Boom as well. So I think you've got to got to respect Cuervolante. Outside of that, I mean, do you think they should be close to the same price? Um, five dollars, yeah, five fifty. Yeah, I've got them maybe not that close, but yeah, I think I think they should be relatively close. Chinny Boom drawn six, Cuervolante eleven. I don't mind um, the, the barrier for Cuervolante. Yeah, don't mind. Yeah, fair enough. Middle of the track, late. Storming home. Um, but I can make a case for a few others. You mentioned Sam Jake. I'm oh, very scared. I want to see what the market does with his horse because, as as we said, that trial, May 31, there was a bit of intent shown. First uh, first run for Waller, McDonald on. Big, big watch on the market there. And Roots um, ran second in this race last year. It was fantastic. Class horse. She's not doing too much wrong. Um, so um is she gonna run in the tats tiara is that her main aim she's been up different campaign to 
to last campaign. She ran well in this race last year. Comrade Rosa actually won this race and, and rises two kilos from last year's effort. But Roots, I think, has got to be in the mix. Who are you siding with? I've actually got Comrade Rosa on top and Coco Jumbo as well. Yep. Um, two horses that will find um, find their, their right ground. Um, Comrade Rosa wasn't a bad run last time. It's just, just even behind some of these. And I think getting her dry track, she'll improve. As you said, won the race last year. She always seems to bob up around this sort of price. Um, and I'm happy to, to trust that. You could throw six of these in your quality and still not get the winner. So um, if you do manage to find the winner, you're going to get a, a reasonable price. Lovely. Well, without further ado, let's uh, head to the Group 1 Strobrite. What a race it is. Very, very tricky race. 1,400 metres, obviously. Group 1. Uh, speed influences in the race, Liam. Yeah, Prince of Boom goes forward again. Um, showed at least a glimpse of its previous form last start, but still not good enough. Still uh, length short of his best, but that's his go. <clears> He'll <throat> push forward. Um, here to shock and Stepati, the two from that are drawn inside, will try and push forward. Here to shock's racing incredibly well at the moment, so consistently. Um, and Amenable is the one that's drawn wide on the track that will try and find that three wide running line and just needs a bit of cover from there to give that horse a really, really good shot in the race. I hope Freedom Rally, as first emergency, gets a run here instead of the first because um, 59 kilos over the mile, race one, I don't think it suits at all. The 1,400 metres down in the weights here, I think it sets up perfectly. So um, certainly a horse that hasn't had heaps go right for it and would love to see it get a run here. Um, but a, a very even field across the board it's and an plenty incredibly, of winning chances. Incredibly intertwined form lines and Freedom Rally ties them all in, obviously ran really well in the King Kinkasuth and the, the BRC sprint prior to that and ties all that form in. Um, cross the line with here to shock in the BRC sprint um, and they are all intertwined. Obviously, the, the Kings for Smith, won by I Wish I Win, Bellini Patina was fantastic there, rises to 1,400 metres for the first time, um, meets them all worse at the weights. Freedom Rally, you you give Freedom Rally a good chance here? Yeah, I really do. Um, I've got Freedom Rally marked third, yep. third pick. Um, gets a six and a half kilo weight swing on Bell and Ipatina from from that um, Kingsford Smith. Probably better at fourteen hundred meters. Loves Eagle Farm for sure, and and actually should have won that BRC sprint mm. behind um, here to shock. Yep. Um, if he get if he got half a bit of luck in that race, um, so very very dangerous here, Freedom Rally, um, and would be giving a really good chance if it gets the scratching it needs. What do you make of Magic Time? Started the same starting price almost as Bell and Ipatina there, and was galloped on. If you put a pen through that. Probably um, in the mix. It's just such a such a tough race. Yes, uh, Magic Times one. I'm keen to take on yep. uh, the current price. Just really thrives on the, those wet tracks, those heavy tracks, the slops, mm. and doesn't get that here. Obviously, has a lot <laughs> of talent still, but I couldn't be getting uh, what's close to single digits, eleven dollars at the moment. I couldn't be taking that short. Um, I think the one I've actually got marked on top and the best betting proposition is one I've touched on very briefly. Amenable. Um, I think they may have finally figured out this horse um, since the gelding a couple of months ago. Um, Price and Kent sort of got a little bit of confidence about it. They've been, last, this will be the third start running where they've taken four weeks in. So they've gone four-week gap, produced a really nice rating, four-week gap, should have won its scone um, when just got beaten out there. And then both of those are really nice ratings and then gets here with only 53 kilos on the, black, on the back. Chatty Schofield's going to need to produce something reasonable from 16. Um, comes into about 14, I think, after the scratchings. But uh, we're getting double figures about this horse, and I've got it marked $6. So best betting proposition of the race. And very scared about Valana, who produced a really nice rating last start. Yeah, we haven't touched on um, Valana, which we'll do so in a minute. Uh, Amenable obviously crosses the line with magic time in the all age over this distance. You're just marking uh, magic time down because that was a wet track? Yep, that was a heavy 10, yep. absolute slop. Um, which they loved. And then Amenable's got some really nice ratings right on top of the green. Good threes and good fours, which we're going to see on Saturday. And then that scone race last start was a soft six um, when had absolutely no luck. So you could mark that up by at least a length on that race. <clears throat> um, a bit of a rougher one that I'm keen to touch on, as Annabelle Nation seems to do in these sort of big uh, group ones, is Mighty Ulysses at 50 mm -hmm. to 1. Um, very wary of this horse, stacked with talent. Two back over the mile at Eagle Farm, produced uh, a rating that would almost have this horse favourite. So... Um, regress from there, as you would expect, um, on the heavy 10 against New Marion. But uh, 50 to 1 is just massive overs for this horse. So we'll certainly be going in the quarter and I'll have something small um, on the exchange. The second smart man to 
recommend that to me. So there you go. A couple of people have found that at 50s. Um, if the market holds up, it'll be a big price on the exchange. Rory, before I dive into who I'm keen on, who are you looking to play on? I've actually got four that I've picked out at yep. close to double figures. I've got Antino, obvious reasons, been set for this. Um, I don't think at the end of the day, barrier 20 is going to be any disadvantage. Could be storming down the outside and just blows a lot of them. Uh, Magic Time is a group one winner over 1,400 metres on a good three. Yep. Um, so she's a bet for me. Um, as you mentioned, win against the pattern. So as you was... mentioned uh, mm-hmm. galloped on. So yep. can forgive that. Um, and not the, you know, st- steps down from weight for age as well. So she gets a little bit of weight relief from that. Um, Mighty Ulysses as well. Um, followed this horse closely. Uh, actually was trying to get him imported to Australia at one point a couple of years ago. Um, totally unknown at 1400 meters could have a bit of x factor loves a dry track um, it's got a 50 percent win rate from 10 starts on dry ground so you're getting what close to 81 dollars or something like that at the moment for that kind of uh, win profile and as liam mentioned huge figure uh, a couple back and then just drowned on the bog last time so um, nisham knows how to throw these imports out at big big prices Look at what she did with Zaki. She's got enough of them. She's got a new le- lease on life <laughs> with Zaki and yeah. what he could do over 1,400 metres and whatnot. So um, I don't think Mighty Ulysses is that far off a similar profile coming out of Europe. And one down the bottom of the weights, uh, Samana, I think, has been running huge, huge races, consistent, always finding the line, um, gets a, what, 52 kilos. Um, I think Kieran Ma in a group one, you can't sort of ignore him too much. And she could be the uh, the obvious knockout hope in the quaddy. I don't think it's obvious. Yeah, it was, no. that, that one was a weird one for me with like two month break with mm. no public trials. Um, that was annoying. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what to do. Never missed the top two of a 1400 dive. It's an impossible race. I'm pretty keen on a couple here, actually. Tell um, us, Tommy. Bits, a bit left field with such in, entwined form, but the inevitable, just a forgotten horse here. It crossed the line with Bellano last time. It went around in the BRC sprint and ran the fastest final 200 metres of the race uh, and the day there. Um, enormous run. Draws eight, dropped six kilos from that run. Why is it $20? Um, very good horse, the inevitable. The other one that hasn't won since your mob won a final, Rory, a Nugget. <laughs> um, he... I don't know if we can say much at the moment. No, we Where's can't talk, but we're still dishing it out. Don't worry. <laughs> um, incredibly unlucky in a Scone Cup when drifting. No doubt this is the aim. We mentioned Mars' record in Group 1s. You have to have to include Nugget because he's good enough. He just needs to do it now. And we saw what Mar did last week in an Oaks. Um, Nugget can win this. Uh, he's got different form lines. So I went looking for Nugget because of the different form lines with so many intertwined and... He's a bit of a knockout, and the inevitable, like I said, I think he's just forgotten. He was fantastic last year. Yeah, and Nugget with that, like, if you go back to his last run, we have similar ground to this uh, in the group one. He was bursting all over the top of them in the uh, in the all. Yep. So if you produce <coughs> that sort of figure, that's that's going to win this. Chances galore. Just repeat who you're keen on and who you're keen to lay. Uh, amenable is the best pick uh, from Valana Freedom Rally and Mighty Ulysses at a big price. And... I'm actually, we'll be laying Antino the place. I don't think uh, this is his race. Um, is he that good? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, uh, like best rating came first up over the 1200. And I was like, okay, I'm in for a great prep. Um, I, I do think the draw hurts him. Um, and I think he's way too short, Caramel. I couldn't believe the price he opened as well. I was going to lay. He's drifting and I think he'll continue to drift. So you could lay him now for me as well. Um, he might be a lay and you can save or we'll get something back later because he, he opened way too short for me in this race and he's starting to drift out. Rory, just repeating your four bets. Yeah, Magic Time, Antino, Mighty All Seas, Samana. There you go. The Inevitable and Nugget for me in the Group 1 Strawberry Handicap. The day finishes with the Q22 Group 2. Interesting race here to finish things off, Liam. Certainly is. And there's uh, there's some European form that I'm super keen to talk about. So I'm going to let uh, Rory take the reins on this one and, and handle it for sure us. Sure, he's got a few he's, strong opinions here, Rory. He's my best bet of the day. Ooh. At Who? Eight, eight bucks or nine bucks, I think he's Adelaide River. Ooh. Um, I've been a fan of this horse uh, for a long time. And really, he should be a three time Group One winner in Europe. And he's not because he was used as the pacemaker for Coolmore 
to land their prize stallions from group ones. If you go back and watch his Irish Derby replay, Jockey falls the handbrake and lets uh, August Rodin uh, fly on by. Um, if you go to his uh, win in the Paddy Power Stakes, where he beat some real smart horses, like the likes of White Birch. White Birch came out last week and absolutely bolted in the uh, Tattersall's Gold Cup over 10 furlongs. So if you go to his form last start, he had cardiac arrhythmia, I think, and he was very, very chunky, like Resi's football preseason chunky. Um, he'll strip a lot fitter. He's up substantially in distance, um, right in his wheelhouse between 2,000 and 2,500 metres. So 2,200 is perfect. Um, you don't book J-Mac for nothing. And no, that's I think, no. I think he's he's going to be on song, and I would not surprise me to see him win by three or four lengths. What did you make of the, the market last? There's a bit of support for him. He went around 4 or 60. Um, I'm surprised given his parade that he did drift late. Is that just a sign of his quality? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, and quite often, you know, sometimes these these Lloyd types, you know, their first first run in Australia, they're either tuned to the minute or they're being set for some loftier targets down down the track. And I think um, I think winning a race like this will go a long way to paying back his purchase price, not that Lloyd needs the money. But um, drawn drawn ideally and I just think that a lot of these have form that are coming off wet tracks and they're running uh, peaks and ratings off wet tracks and this is going to be a dry track and he's been screaming for dry ground in Europe which is the whole reason they brought him to Australia in the first place is to target our spring climate weather and I, I think he's he's uh, a seriously good bet. I think you're in agreement. I think we all are actually in um, the way we're playing this race. Yep, certainly am. Um, Joe Mack for Chris Lees. I, I think Chris didn't even uh, try and win first up. Hasn't run Can't over say that, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, like, hasn't even run over the anything near eighteen hundred since twenty twenty two, and then so most recent preparation last year were all over the twenty four hundred and two thousand. So um, suffered cardiac arrhythmia, arrhythmia, as Rory said, and um, I think this is the race that they're, they're setting for, and we're getting a superb price to find out. So uh, yeah, seven fifty eight dollars Adelaide River. The other one that uh, I want to find in the race, along with it, has plenty of European form as well in Light Infantry Man. Um, we're yet to see his best in Australia. I think came over for the King Charles uh, when Drew Wide and never had much luck. But I really like the way he went through the line last start from back with no luck. Out to the 2200 is going to bring on that best European form, giving a really good chance. We're getting $16, $17 in the market now. So play those two European form. Um, I think Faulkner Park and he's a shocker might be the best of the locals, but I don't think... They'll uh, get near the Europeans. Ten agree. I think you've summed it up really well. I've uh, made a lot of infantry man a, a really good bet for me. I just want to ask Rory, does he get the distance? Light infantry man, that's that would be the query for me. If it was a wet track, I think he would. Yeah. I just think he's he might be a bit tapped a bit at you know, beyond two thousand meters. That would be my, my query. If it was if it was a different kind of track, if it was Mooney Valley or something like that, <clears> um, I'd say yes. But I think Eagle Farm not so much. I'd be that. That's where I'd be. That's where I think we're getting a price for him. Um, but at weight for age, you know, Adelaide River should be light years clear um, uh, uh, ratings. Yep. So to get eight bucks plus for that kind of horse that brings serious Group One form, um, form lines that basically tie in with Equinox, um, I'm I'm keen to dive in. Pretty handy. Um, yeah, so I'm with Light Infantry Man, and I can't argue with Adelaide River as well, um, also known as the Torrens Lamb. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, Tommy Two played for me there, and I'm pretty keen to take on Faulkner Park. I know it was pretty good last start, but just these horses, I don't like the Derby Cup form really. Um, all intertwined, they all just bob up and take turns in some of these races. So I'm looking against that form line. So Tommy Two played for me, Light Infantry Light Infantry Man and Adelaide River as well. We're all on the same page. Uh, let's get to our best bets and other bets throughout the day. Liam, have you got a few for us? Yeah, well, um, the reason I didn't discuss Kovalika during that preview just then is, is that's going to be um, part of the lay streak for Ooh. me and my biggest lay of the day is going to be taking on Kovalika both win and place. Yep. And the lay streak will just be the win, um, but really keen to take this runner on. Um, just continues to be overrated by the market. This, I mean, we've just gone through all the credentials of Adelaide um, River and, and Light Infantry Man and Co. And Kovalika sits at $5 in the current market. I mean, you cannot possibly justify that. Um, as Drawn White again will get back, always continues to produce that sort of run. And, and getting out to 2200 is going to be 
um, you know, of benefit to Kovalika, but it's still not at the level of these other horses. So very keen to take that runner on. And the best of the day, as mentioned earlier on, is uh, is amenable each way in the strategy. Uh, have you got a lay for us of the day before we get into your other bets and best bets? You know what? I'll, just, I'll go with broadsiding. I, uh, I, I actually think, you know, we should get a choppy fence. Um, and that might mean J-Mac... His, or his potential a little more positive. You know, you draw low, low, and he'll just end up in one one, and he'll just, or he'll just end up in the in the pack, and then be looking for daylight, and then he'll be trending <coughs> after that. Yeah, fair enough. My lay for the lay streak. I happy to lay Faulkner Park. I totally agree with you, Clover Laker. Um, happy. I could lay both. I'll ask if that's. Uh, I'll ask the producers if that's legal to lay two horses in one race for the lay streak. But um, I'm pretty keen to take on um, Faulkner Park and Clover Laker. We can do it on Betfair, so why? Correct. They both can't win. So, well, they can technically. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I'll, I'll be laying both of those, Cover Laker and Faulkner Park there. I've just made my mind up. Thanks, Liam, for swaying me. <laughs> Have you got any other bets, best bets on the program, Liam? Uh, yes. So, amenable each way. Mighty Ulysses uh, at a big price in the Stratty. Um, Chinny Boom, Sam Majik in the Dane Ripper. Broadsiding in the JJ. And that each way special in the Guns and Classic, Mary Shan coming over from New Zealand. At a big price. Love that. How about you, Rory? Adelaide River best bets, in play strategy for Ahmad, uh, and best value is probably warning at about thirty dollars plus. Ooh, don't mind that. I'm uh, keen to spec a couple at Rose Hill actually. Um, the Shingus Prestige um, over two thousand meters well, did enough last start, so bit of value there across the border. The Victorians have good records in these staying races in Sydney, so um, I think that's not a bad shout there. And I also like um, this horse, race seven, number five, Hanau uh, Godolphin. Um, isn't proven in the city yet, but I think he's a horse with a lot of upside. So um, a nice value play there as well, race seven, number five at Rose Hill. Trial then, any good? I yeah, trial. No off. Trials. Yep. Yeah, yep, trial quite well. Um, I wouldn't tip it as if it didn't, Liam. <laughs> Just thought you'd uh, Just check that it trial would track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, correct. Um, I'm pretty keen on a couple in the. Uh, I think Claude Volante can run well, but not a best bet. I actually like uh, the Inevitable Nugget as a play. And the two we mentioned in the last as well, um, a lot of infantry man, Adelaide River, I think, going to get the choppers for us. So maybe a hamburger for us, Liam, in race nine at Eagle Farm. Gents? <laughs> we're getting we're getting a soft track at Rose, all right? Yep. Uh, yes. We are. Yep. Then lay point king the place. Lay point king the place. There you go. It will drown. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for joining us, guys. Royal Ascot yeah. special coming up as well. I look forward to that. Royal Ascot starting Tuesday. It'll be good. Looking forward to it. Thanks for having us, Tommy. Absolute pleasure. Stick around for the Ascot special. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.